hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, can hear you. Very good. Excellent. We're both not like technologically in that. No. <laughs> Oh, How just, are you, man? Like you're just fucking. Lo just lost my pair of socks, and I don't know where the fuck they've gone. The only ones, the only clean ones I have, my feet are freezing. Ugh. Your clit is freezing. My feet. Oh, I was gonna say. Well, first of all, we have to talk about why you have a clit. But second of all, okay, your feet are freezing. Why are your feet? Fr well, because you just took a fucking cold ass shower. No, I didn't take a shower because I was waiting for the hot water still. Well, and then I got distracted trying to fix my microphone. And the, apparently it takes 40 uh, minutes for the, it's a, it's a gas boiler so it takes 40 minutes for the water to heat up isn't it? yep 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 so I'm, used I'm, to currently, I'm currently sitting here with a paper cleaned ass dan and that's what i wanted to talk about well first okay so are we going straight in you have a paper cleaned ass paper now cleaned ass. ass i don't know what that is sorry what did you say kind of broke up Let's go straight in because I know this is one of the points that you wanted to have a discussion about. So I don't know. Yeah. The paper what, what what really interests me is well, I want to write. I'm going to write something about it, but um, particularly why in the U.S. it's in the black community that there's like this different approach to ask me. Right. So I mean, I think there's more it of a of, it seems to have a lot of relationship to slavery. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say there's so much uh, a relationship to slavery. There might there might be some ties, but I think there is a general um, debate or um, can, what's the word I'm looking for? Disagreement upon like what mm -hmm. is to be claimed between white and black people. Yeah. And so one thing that is always heavily encouraged in the black community is booty help, is ass help. And so um, we have always been taught that, like, it's, I mean, I think a lot of people like this anyway, like your, your body is trained to just go ahead and just poop um, either first thing in the morning at whatever interval time it is so that it's regular, right? And so that you know to kind of like take a bath after that. For a lot of black people, it tends to be in the morning. Like as soon as you wake up, you might have like a little cup of Joe or some whatever it is. And then you poop yeah. and you get into the shower. But the shower routine, I think, is the unspoken part um, that a lot of people don't know for black people is because we go above and beyond sort of like trying to maintain booty health. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, so, I mean, where are we right now? Did you get all of that? Or yeah, we, yeah. do we need to take a break or where are we at? Yeah, there's this sort of like... Because there's this tendency within, I mean, I'm not necessarily... I can't hear you at all. Oh. I'm sorry, I just need to... Is this microphone kind of... Let me just try and plug this thing back in. One second. Okay. Now I can hear you, but no. don't know if it's going to continue or... Can you hear me now? What is this thing doing? Uh... Can you hear me? I can hear you like yeah. very faintly, but um, just you very know. faintly. So I don't know like you, how much I'm gonna. Can you hear me better now or what? Yep, oh, that's just... much better. Okay, let me just find a pair of headphones rather than these fucking this headset. That's bullshit. Okay, because I'm trying to use a headset, but it's not it's not working for some reason. Well, that's because you bought them at the Seven Eleven. No, I didn't. <laughs> but okay. Um, so what I was gonna what I was gonna say was uh, repeat your last point because just to backtrack. So no, I think there is a bit of a cultural difference between um, just maintaining ass health. But it's interesting because uh, and, because I, because there's this sort of like there's something that I was interested in. I was reading a paper, like an academic paper about it. It's sort of like. The, the anus basically as an erogenous zone and things like that and how how in certain cultures particularly it seems white cultures where there's this it's like 
it's immediately sort of tr treated in like, oh, that's gay, that's homosexual. You know, it's like it's homoerotic if you're like putting your fingers up your ass or something. That it's there's no way for it to not like it's in like in in certain white cultures it seems, and I think it goes beyond white cultures, but it, it seems more in Western culture in general. There's a certain sort of like automatic um, eroticization of the of the anus, which isn't which isn't always which sure. isn't I mean, uh, true, I, I, which isn't true across all cultures, particularly because you know like historically obviously in japan and in asian cultures they've always right. sort of they've always sort of like got yeah. got deep in there and got got their asses very clean you know like <laughs> right right yeah right exactly like i mean well that's the first point you're talking about like keeping it clean and inventing uh machinery and uh tools that allow you to maintain a clean ass which in the west is sort of obsolete we don't really have that as much um and i think we have just gotten so comfortable with the idea of just wiping and feeling like that's i know but, I mean, but then it's just sort of like what well, there's this clear there's this clear acknowledgement i feel i mean like everyone know everyone everyone knows they're walking around with these unclean asses and to me it's sort of it, right. it reflects deeply on this this self-hatred that's sort of a permanent feature of of contemporary western culture no yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would. I mean, that's fine. You're, you're definitely entitled to your choice of words. I don't know if I would say it's a, it's a self hatred thing as much as it is of an ignorant thing, where people don't realize that just wiping the ass will leave the what I like to call boo boo residue um, but, but, inside you, of your but, ass. But, but I mean, even if, but Dan, even if they're consciously unaware of it, unconsciously they are fully aware of it. Surely. And so, at the uncon mm. at the at the unconscious level, there is this deeply, deeply, deep, profound self hatred that is sort of reflected in the fact that their asses are never clean. I mean, in some ways, I agree with you, but I think in some ways, it's also about like teaching and learning, right? Like what your parents taught you, and my parents have always taught me to make sure that my ass is clean even my aunts my grandmas did like after i shit you get your ass in there with that towel and you wash it with soap but then don't, vinegar don't, but then but, 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 but this is but on, but, but so 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 to say that people are consistently aware of their dirty butts i don't know i don't no, know i'm I saying i'm, I'm not saying i'm not saying they are aware of it um, what what's being said here is that there is a clear there will clearly be at the unconscious level an awareness of it because people you can feel it in your ass you can you, you know there's a there's a oh, yeah. some degree oh, of yeah. sensory awareness surrounding it there's a clear there's a feeling that there's a feeling that you haven't totally got rid of everything from your body that there's this remnant always there right right and i feel I that, mean, that, re so, that sort of residue that remnant thing, right? is, is it's sort of like we're this, talking about like it's just so, oh, right. So let me just finish we're, the point. We're talking about like it's it's like this. If, somatic... if, if you get caught outside, you know what I mean, like, and you have to take a shit, then there's not much you can do about making sure that you have total uh, cleansing ass function. I guess you could say. Mm. But if you know for sure, like, you wake up every morning and you take a shit at like seven forty five a.m. And you know you need to go ahead and get your ass clean. Then there's a routine that you need to do that. But like, if you're caught outside, that's one thing. But if you're at home and you're not doing what you're supposed to, that's that's kind of nasty. Yeah, no, so. it, it totally is. But I mean, I just think it's it's very interesting that sort of the culture that from the perspective established really here is that sort of the one that, the one which has the most or has the most sort of profound self-hatred seems to be the one which doesn't clean its ass <laughs> you know? that's well and see and that's the interesting part to me because i mean and i know i obviously have a super diverse group of friends you know that because yeah who i am but um i'm just curious is that a thing in the white community where white people have not been taught to cleanse their ass yeah but i mean shit. i think that's the, but that's a, sort of this sort of generational self-hatred kind of being reflected back at sort of the the bio, the sort of 
the treatment of their bodies, you know, and the more and the treatment of the anal region and sort of like this this sort of fetishization of the anal region is this dirty place sort of thing, which also then gets caught up in all of this sort of homoeroticism and all of that, you know. Right. That it, you, right, that, that right it's right. almost like it's it's taboo to talk about the ass because that allows it to become this fetishized region. And the only way for that fetishization to occur is for people to not clean their asses so that it becomes sort of this dirty area, you know, that's disgusting. Sort of, that's, that's disgusting? This well, dirty and, area and, that's sort of that, forbid. It's that, like become, it's, 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 it's a way of generating like a forbidden object in the body, right? Right, right. Totally agree. And yeah. I would also add to that is that it's also about just a lack of education and the way that people should be cleaning their assholes. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't, so I, I'm not, I'm not denying the lack of education, Dan. But what I'm saying is that I think this, the lack of education reflects more deeply on the unconscious sort of tendency in the culture towards generating certain sort of generating this kind of repression with regards to the ass and its cleanliness and which reflects more deeply on the cleanliness of the body and everything else you know but then i think it's really no. what the very interesting it, the very interesting thing is that which when i read it when you posted it, it was it was like i didn't know that the black communities was were, were very much like engaged in ensuring sort of anal cleanliness i suppose and so why no, what what I, why I, I do you think, think i, think, I think to me there must be there's some connection there to slavery and sort of the deep oppression of 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 blacks like and how that worked at the unconscious level that's what i was kind of interested in exploring well there are a lot of cultural differences that uh we could speak about especially if we're talking about in terms of relation to slavery but um why people also used to keep chickens inside of the house which created uh, all sorts of diseases for the inhabitants of the home. And um, some of that I can't speak for sure. I can't speak for the fact. But then it's not, I mean, it's not, if, it's not actually, I mean, because the French, for example, historically had bidets, didn't they? And so it's not, it's not universal to Western culture, but I mean, in at least in, I mean, at least when we're talking about contemporary culture, the majority of people are cleaning their asses with paper. And it's it's just I mean, it's, when you when you when you see that in Western culture, and then you go to Asia and see the way that they sort of mm -hmm. treat their anal region, it's sort of like Jesus Christ, you know, Western people are fucking disgusting. This is you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no, I I totally get it. But when you're going to you're, and you're talking about like specifically how did Black Americans, Black enslaved Americans learn to make sure that their asses were clean but also so not just learn but like exactly. why why that was the case and why well that's perhaps, what I'm saying. like because probably know, I, probably I, probably the I, I, I don't have any empirical research to say that no but we're not talking exactly. about empirical here it's more sort of just speculation about the sort of unconscious functioning both collectively individually of the community of of the black community at that time but i mean i imagine the slave owners were not particularly interested in the cleanliness of their asses but who knows the, the research would need i mean you need to do a bit of re reading to work to find out about we something. wouldn't know no we wouldn't know. it would be very hard to find out because this is no, this is one of the this is no. one of those this is one of those areas these taboo topics that are sort of unacceptable to talk about and it's it's a very right. important thing to talk right. about because it's one of those sites of it's where when you actually do bring this out into discussion and think about it you realize that there's so much trapped up in it in terms of I think the larger conversation is. I think the larger conversation is is that in how much we all hate it, but it's um, there are certain things that we consider to be um, nasty, if you will, or disgusting, if you will, to certain cultures, and for a, a lot of black people, like just having or maintaining a nasty ass is just like unacceptable. Like we just well, I mean, don't to like me, to, to me, it. the most obvious thing would be that sort of like because because of during slavery at least because of the blacks lack of external control over their lives the thing that they were able to exercise control over the cleanliness of their body became sort of developed into i mean because they were able to keep themselves clean in that respect i mean i don't i don't know how prevalent that kind of behavior was in but i mean even in contemporary culture it's it's right like i mean black people tend to I mean, because of their historical oppression and continued oppression, they they have less or they feel less ability to exercise control over their external 
environment and actively have less control over their external environment. And so something that they can control is sort of like making sure that they're clean in front of the world or whatever, you know? And so it's, it's also a form of them being able to sort of exercise control over their lives, maybe. I, I don't know. I, don't know I mean, I, I, w- I would not disagree with that to a large extent. Um, I also think, like I said before, there are certain cultural practices that um, people adopt and find value in and um, body, you know, body control function and body, Mm. I guess, smells and the way that we are interpreted by other people became really, really popular and maybe in part for, for like you said because like you know black people had to present themselves in a certain way but, but then for i mean sure, i think it, like, it gets, gets interesting than, dan because because of your position as a like a black gay man right too that it's like right. if you identify as gay right. or whatever it doesn't matter but i mean because of the fact that sort of how do you think that gets caught up in sort of like anal eroticism and the difference between sort of i mean in other words to put it in very clear stark sure. term clear stark terms is to say somebody some so, some white some just to say dan so, okay so compare some white guy that some white guy that cleans his ass with paper versus some black guy that you know actually spends time making sure his ass is clean what do you think the difference is in terms of sort of hom- homosexuality hmm. between those two individuals right so i've had this conversation with uh several white gay male friends of mine who feel like I, I'm, I don't know if your your audience is used to just using a douche. The douche machine is just basically like this bottle that you squeeze like water up into your ass and just removes the, the fecal matter from your ass. But um, to a lot of colored men, and that is across the spectrum, that is not enough. You need to be using a little bit of soap water and a little bit of uh, vinegar. Mm-hmm. vinegar is what removes the bile from the ass and this can be for straight sex this could be for anal sex and it doesn't take a lot it's just like a cap full mm-hmm. and it's enough to go ahead and have a pleasurable anal experience so yeah like when you're talking about uh people especially men who have just been you know program to be so do you think that uh, I mean, because presumably then dan that would that would suggest then that sort of would you say overall i mean and this is sort of generalizing terms perhaps but then that <clears throat> that the homosexual homosexual tendencies of men of white men or whatever that that don't engage in that kind of anal cleanliness tend to be more oriented towards a sort of self-hating type homosexuality rather than a sort of accepting more loving kind of i don't know you know you know it seems do you understand where i'm going with that well I, what, yeah i understand i totally understand where you're going with that so, but so what i would say to fight back against that a little bit is that it's not just a white male um resistance to anal sex because first of all if we're talking about like heterosexual anal sex um a lot of straight guys sort of get you know fucked around and feared about about you know, having anal sex with someone who hasn't properly prepared. But um, even in the black community, for sure, like, I mean, if you, but in the black community, for sure, like if you have not prepared and you haven't douched and properly douched, then it's it's pretty, pretty damning. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say it's, 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 it's a color thing at all. I just think it's, it's an education and cultural thing about whether or not you've been taught to properly. Yeah, I'm just thinking how, that. you know, how, how this, because particularly in the white community where there's this lack of anal cleanliness or whatever, there's presumably like sort of, right. a, there's a more generalized sort of um, repression of, the anus as an anal region because it's sort of like it's so it's it's sort of unconsciously recognized as being this dirty area that can't be kept clean or you know that, that right. It, 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 right whereas in the black right. whereas in whereas in black communities or asian communities too where there's a, an awareness that it's it's perfectly clean when you do it you know that you can make it perfectly clean rather than just having this constant fecal residue or whatever in your ass you know right and having that is right. that seems to be a deep reflection to the subject where whether they are consciously aware of it or not it's kind of irrelevant 
it is sort of this deep sort of lingering sort of disgust at the self you know well i think it's it's um like we said before it's it, it comes down it comes down to education and it comes down to what your forefathers and your mothers and grandmothers have taught you about how to maintain a clean ass but if your solution has to just been wipe a little water along your asshole and expect to have any sort of anal pleasure is that's i mean that's out the window so that's is that is that not then is that not then like <clears throat> like because the the goal then for white or the white culture or whatever is to not have anal pleasure no, I think the white, I, I think, <laughs> and let me just talk from some experience, but I think a lot of white guys uh, disregard the opposition to the smell, to the uh, experience of anal sex itself, when that bottom, let's go ahead and call it the person the bottom, has not properly prepared for that kind of experience. So. I've not had that with a lot of black guys. A lot of white guys, yes. A lot do you of black think, guys. Do you think that? But do you think no. that then becomes a site of sort of like eroticism for them? Then, like the that sort of the repression of the, you know, like the shit, this sort of shit fetish, kind of, I suppose. No, I don't think so. I, no. I, I think those guys are very particular, and they have a very specific um, um, fetish that they are, you know, excited to engage in. I don't think that's what it is. I think it is just a laziness, to be honest. It's just I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not convinced by the, the view that it's just educational laziness in the sense that it's, there's, there's clearly an unconscious sort of element to it and how it's functioning. If we look at it from sort of a psychoanalytical perspective, it's deeply right. rooted in, so, you know. But, no. but, but so they know a lot of these guys are versatile. Which they know, but I mean, they know that they know Dan, but they don't know that they know. If that makes sense. No, but I mean, you're straight. I mean, so they're, they're acting as if they, they're acting. They, they know that their asses are unclean, but they're acting as if they don't know that they know they're unclean. That's true, too. Some of those guys are true. That's that's true. But I, think too. I mean, this is but, not just this is not just I mean, this is not just true of men. This is true of all people. You know that the approach, and so it's important. Yeah, to even if you wanted to go dimension like, of women, a girl with the ass, and like, and she, right? Yeah, she knows her ass is fucking unclean. But um, if we're talking about gay guys, which gay guys are whores, let's just I don't know how deep we went going to that. But um, so well, I mean, it's an interesting conversation it, too about how I mean how yeah why why there's a tendency towards this sort of like prolific promiscuity in in homosexual communities and, and the gay male culture right exactly yeah. so a lot of them I mean I have these conversations with the, they, they call themselves lazy bottoms is is what it is and it's just it's, it's <laughs> more less like okay all right it's funny expression you're lazy bottom but they're also nasty like I I mean if I know I'm gonna even try to bottom like I'm going to make sure that I am. 100 percent clean but, but don't, you, um, don't you think then that this sort of somebody that would be characterized as a lazy bottom is sort of like viciously filled with self-hatred see and you're right and going back to that thing where you see where you're saying it's self-hatred it's not that it's 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 really about just being lazy like they're just lazy like yeah but, don't yeah, yeah, but that's just too simple i mean that's just ignoring that's just ignoring the fact that there is clearly an unconscious functioning at, at the same time right i mean the laziness is a reflection of a sort of deeper underlying sort of um understanding of the individual's understanding of themselves right okay i could rock with that i will walk with that in the sense that i believe that if you think it's okay for you to have an ass full of shit as i am the top exactly right? yeah I mean that's it fucked up. Right. Why, okay. why is how how is it? But then, but then, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Yeah. So if I am going to continue to oh shit, I'm pressing buttons. I hope I didn't. Damn. Can you still hear me? Yeah. No worries. Okay. Um. So if I am going to continue to continue to fuck you, and you know 
you just had Taco Bell that night. You have not douched properly. <laughs> it is what it oh, is. Yeah. It's kind of like, all right, like, they're like you said, like there's yeah, a but I mean, yeah, it's of... also, but then also, what does that reflect about their understanding of the relationship and their 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 actual consideration of the other person's feelings too, with regards to the right. sort of sexual right. interaction, right, 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 right? With regards to yeah. right. well, see, everybody has that, but see, this is the thing, and this guess you're not gay, right? So yeah. you're gonna have one or two instances where you're like, oh wow, like I didn't know, like. I was about to have like a little shit fest like during this whole experience mm-hmm. and then it happens from time to time so it's fine even if you're fucking a girl like you yeah, might yeah. get a little shit on the dick like it's uh-huh. fine like but if somebody is doing it consistently that's when it's a problem you you, you are you are you are making a decision to be nasty every single fucking time. Yeah, no, that's and that's, but that's that's na- that's nastiness both towards yourself and the other, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. That's where it's like sort of deeply. That's where it's deeply unconscious because it's sort of like, to me, it's sort of this. It's this constant dialectic between self hatred and hatred, where it's sort of like they hate themselves, so they're kind of projecting that hate that onto somebody else by hating the other person who they're having this relationship with sort of not in a direct sense necessarily hating them but kind of hating them by giving them this shitty asshole to fuck basically you know yeah i mean yeah. and see i think that's a little bit too generalized like i don't think like a lot of gay men feel that way some of them for sure but um you know it's more of just like oh as one of my friends, I'm not going to name his name, but he's just like, oh, you know, shit happens sometimes when you're having anal sex. And I'm like, no, you're fucking nasty. Like, yeah, but you, you could know, minimize you can minimize it, right? Yeah, rather than making it sort of a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to have shit happen every single fucking well, you can also pre- Well, you can also presumably, I mean, I, I just don't know, but I mean, you're presumably you can just, t- I mean, you can time your time it so that you don't have it related to bowel movements, right? Well, I mean kind of but i well i don't know how much you want me to go in to all of this no but, it's, i mean well, I, I, I mean it doesn't really matter i don't really, is, i think it's quite i think this is quite an interesting conversation people. this is good for the people because they need to know the black person's perspective on keeping it clean right yeah. no no it's more just so, when I, I remember you posting um, it i can't remember you posted it last year and it just it's just because there's some of the work that I've been doing is just very much directed towards sort of this, well, I mean, well, both towards sort of um, self-hatred as a concept, but also towards um, this notion of kind of, have you ever heard of Anti-Oedipus, which is a book by Deleuze and Guattari, a philosopher and a psychoanalyst? I have not. So I, I, I mean, it's more, 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 I, I'd been familiar with work, but then came across it again recently. And it's more about, thinking about the thinking about well for one their argument really essentially is that the only truly revolutionary subject left in in capitalist societies is the schizophrenic because they are the only person that is sort of not allowed to exist within the system and so what what else is interesting is to look at the areas which are basically you, in their terms, you would say de-territorialized in that they're not currently. Right. And see, in other words, that, there's certain that, ar- there's certain areas that, that haven't like like this discussion of shitty asses that don't don't seem to have actually been brought out into the open and discussed in any meaningful way. And these are areas which reveal a lot about the nature of the society in which we live. Sorry, you went away for. I, um, I can't hear you so I'm saying these areas, these sort of these areas that are never discussed, these things that go unsaid are usually the areas because they're, they're the areas that remain left over. They're, they're sort of like the night of the light of the night, I suppose, is how I've been characterizing it. They're sort of this area of darkness in the society that aren't that aren't talked about. And consequently, when no, you actually when sure. you actually bring them when you bring them out into the open and talk about them, they end up revealing a lot sure. about the na- they they end up revealing for a sure. lot about the nature of society that has gone unsaid, you know. And so that's why it's important to bring them out and and try to flesh out and try to think about what the implications are and what it is they reveal about the nature of our society and consequently the nature of or or the sort of areas in which they reveal sites of contention and possibilities in 
opening up things in a different direction, you know? Totally agree. I mean, you said nothing that I disagree with. I'm, I, I guess I would just say that, like, I don't have anything to say, actually. Like, I, I pretty much totally agree with everything. It's just, it's, just, just it's, it's, more, it's more trying to d dig a bit deeper into, um, still, I think, about what it, I mean, what else we, what else can be drawn out from this clear cultural distinction between the black community who is very much well aware of the importance and that's i presume it's the same with women in the black community right like everyone's concerned with their anal cleanliness between black and black black men and black women yeah it's is the that same. what you mean yeah and what i'm saying oh. is black women are the same there's no I don't, there's no gender difference no. here i i would make a correlation between those two things now no but i'm saying are black women concerned with their anal cleanliness just as much as black men um probably yes like, i mean it's, it's a cultural thing more, so i mean like black women will do the same no, sort well, of well, behaviors it's, as black it's, men it's because it's because <laughs> as much as black men don't admit it black men likes going and getting down in both of those holes down there and yeah yeah you know have a little fun so but, then but how do you that's think, probably good how do you think that relates because because i mean generally within the black community there's quite you know homosexuality is fairly i mean i know it's, it's the same within white communities and it's sort of a class thing but it, it seems to have been a tendency historically that homosexuality is very much sort of like uh marginalized within black communities right oh yeah oh yeah so like, i mean how I would, do you think that how do you think that relates that marginalization of homosexuality relates to the 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 i mean we you can't say obsession because it's not it's just but the the basic commitment it is an the, no no but the basic well, the no the basic commitment is, dan just listen for a second the basic commitment to oh. anal the basic commitment to anal cleanliness how do you think that relates to the marginalization of the marginalization of homosexuality in black communities so we have to make two distinctions first and we're the first one we need to make is that it's not about just black versus white right so you're talking about all marginalized all minority communities mm -hmm. that feel um any sort of act of homosexuality is um disrespectful denying dirt, dirt. No, but i mean the, because obviously traditionally homosexuality would be considered dirty and the reason it would be considered dirty is because of the fact that an anuses are dirty they're shitty you know but that's not necessarily true when you're actually spending time to make sure that you're clean down there right so it's interesting to see it's interesting to think why there is this marginalization of homosexuality in black communities when there is a commitment to anal cleanliness I wasn't listening to anything you just said. So you've got a couple of different complicated issues, right? So one thing about the dirtiness, which you which you just were very emphatic about, but you're also talking about the emasculation of the man, which is uh, yeah. not at um apparent to a lot of white people they don't feel like the emasculation of a man uh if somebody identifies as being gay or bisexual then that person is sorry oh, that person is not um i don't know it's not manly enough but two damn what were we about to talk we were talking about something else you said disease what were we talking about no i was, was just saying that idea? i was just saying that it's interesting to think that there's there's despite because of the historical association but i mean this is this gets complicated i don't know if you've ever are you familiar with michel foucault the french philosopher um uh, history foucault, he has a I'm famous happy. book called the history of sexuality he writes about the fact that sort of sexuality as a concept didn't really exist historically until sort of I think he says the 1800s from what i remember and so these these all these notions of and he he was gay but all of these notions of homosexuality heterosexuality are all relatively recent social constructs that act to act to fit people into boxes and so on that aren't because really if we look i mean particularly if you look at gender from the perspective of someone like judith butler who's a feminist you know famous 
fairly famous contemporary feminist, she talks about, you know, gender as being a performativity, you know, that that really there are no categories of sexuality or categories of, of, of sexual identity. And these are all social constructs that dis, dis, that, that territorialize, territorialize the subject into fitting into certain boxes rather than, rather than allowing them to pursue some kind of sort of fluidity in their, in their subjectivity. Okay. And how that then uh, fits, how that then fits into this discussion of, of, I mean, this is a difficult, challenging issue, but how does that then fit into this discussion of, of, of racial identity, of, 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 of sexual identity, and how that fits into this, these notions of anal erogeneity and, and, and filth and, and anal, gonna, anal repression, we're gonna, basically. We're going to start with the anal erogen, er, erogenous zones um, and how men feel about that. I don't feel like that that's a ethnical, racial um, objection, if you will. No, no, like it's, just, it's just interesting that there's this, there's this intersectionality between um, pretty much what you said, you know, it, there's an intersectionality between anal cleanliness and, the, and, and the, well, yeah, there's just, and, and race, right? There's an intersectionality between race and anal cleanliness, which is just a very interesting thing that's been has seemed to us to seem to us just seems that's to have true. been seems to have been ignored really as a, as, a, as a point of discussion well, cleanliness i agree now rates and um pleasure i uh, sorry race and anal pleasure i do think there is some um discrepancy there what what do you think that and is I'm, then um, I think actually, I think white people have embraced it a lot more. I think white people have uh, tried to explain what it is to be anally and prosthetically pleasured. So you think? You, so, sorry, just be clear. You said you said you think white people are more embracing of anal pleasure. Oh yeah, oh okay. yeah. Hmm. Black black men are terrified of anal pleasure. Because they feel like that that makes them gay, but that is because mm -hmm. that is because if we're going to go talk about the whole slavery thing, which I don't want to go back to. But I mean, I think that's really but, interesting then to think to think that the community that you think gains the most pleasure from um, anal 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 pleasure is also the one where they they repress most of all the anus in a certain way by not making it clean. So when they don't when they don't no let, let me let me just let me just let me just finish this point down because when they don't bring it out and when they don't bring it out into the open and they keep part of it sort of repressed there's actually a lot more pleasure being derived from the experience and this this reflects to a much more profound sort of understanding drawn from existentialism that suggests you know that how necessary repression and 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 self-hatred and, and suffering is for pleasure no no that's not what i said Okay, that's so, what I would say. What, what I was saying was that I think white men in general, gay white men, if we're being specific, gay white men um, do not object to what you would call dirty anal pleasure and are fine with um, interacting with anal pleasure that may not be the most hygienic. Uh, black men and other minority men on the other spectrum might be a little bit more um, prepped, might be a little bit more uh, ready for the experience. And I don't think that so, that makes either, well, let me finish. I don't feel like that that makes white people, um, white guys, white gay guys, um, less um shameful of the experience that they're having or black people less shameful of the experience that they're having they're just operating on this is what i would like to happen during this experience whether it's what i consider to be clean or what i consider to be unclean so mm. I mean, if, if, just to speculate, because, you know, if, if we accept if we accept this argument that I said earlier by of, of Michel Foucault, that sexuality is a relatively recent historical construct and and the notion of homosexuality wasn't really a thing. You know, people didn't 
have the identity. Michel Foucault. Okay. Yeah, look him up anyway. But I mean, so if, if, if you know, like, if, 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 from what I recall, I haven't read History of Sexuality in a long time, but um, he he makes the argument from what I recall about the notion that you, you had, for example, you had a lot of kings, right, in the past that would, they have sex, you know, like pedestry, basically, that they'd have sex with young boys and all that sort of thing. But it would never be, it would never be t transformed into a sexual identity. It would simply just be something they did. It was just a performance, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like that king's gay, he only has sex with men. It was like, you know, he does everything. It's just what, that's just what he is. That's just him, you know, it's just the king rather than and that's kind of more of a broad lesson the king being this sort of a, a representation of the the subject basically in more general terms so it's sort of like this argument about re very much related to um judith butler's idea of performativity but that that what i'm trying to what i'm speculating about here and what i think you might have an idea about it is sort of how how perhaps historically then there's this there's this um, connection between the emergence of homosexuality as a category that you can be so the emergence of the gay as a as a concept that you of a, as an identity that you can conform to and its relationship then to um the the, the anus and 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 the development of because actually, if you go back in history, it'd be very interesting to look at that in terms of Michel Foucault's history of sexuality and the connection between, because if you go back to sort of, Vic, I mean, if you go back to sort of the, the Tudor period in England, like sort of the end of the Tudor period, 1700s, people were definitely, I mean, the douche was a, a was a popular thing to have, you know, um, the, the French influence on the, the bidet was a big sort of, it was a big thing in, 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 in white culture to clean your ass properly. But then with the emergence of homosexual with the emergence of homosexuality as a category of identity, there becomes this 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 movement away from anal cleanliness, perhaps. I don't know. And, and maybe there's this connection between the emergence or the development of homosexuality as a category and the emergence of a of a less clean ass. <laughs> That's the speculation. You're muted, Dan. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, you you are muted. Okay, yeah, no. So I mean, I mean, I agree with you, and I'm not. I mean, I haven't done the research, so I'm not no. I, I don't know. This is just pure speculation, but it seems it seems an interesting line of thought to go down. Y yeah, but you know what's funny is even visiting uh, visiting Egypt and uh, you know just watching some of the. Um, you know, the colonial baths and stuff like that, and Alexandria, yeah, yeah. And Cairo, and all that stuff like that. And uh -huh. obviously, these monuments of men with men and all of that stuff. And it's kind of like, oh, I'm just, I mean, there was no inscription that I could read well enough to understand if there was um, anal hygiene properly practiced, if that's where we're going with this conversation. But yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I think people have been into ass sex for a while. I don't know if this is where you wanted to go with the soul conversation. No, but I, I think. But, no, but what, what I'm saying is, I think that perhaps the sort of the development of homosexuality, homosexuality as a concept, does go hand in hand with this lack of anal hygiene, perhaps, and that that prior to that there was this ability when when you had a clean ass and you were you you respected that anal cleanliness, there was there was a greater sort of acceptance of the role of of the anus in pleasure in the sexual experience and that it was a more sort of universal kind of area of erogeneity rather than being this sort of fetishized thing that only gays engage in and that also then contributes to this sort of like the other the like other that. the the process of yeah. other the process of the othering of the gay and then the development of homophobia and all of those sort of things but in other time and in other times though especially now like a lot of guys like scat, they like dirty asses. It's, yeah. it's like, oh, all right, if that's what you're into, then go ahead and go for that. But I'm not into that shit. But... <laughs> Literally not into that shit. Not into that shit. Like, I'm just not into it. But, yeah. um, no, but I get what you're saying. Um, 
But you, do you think then, I mean, well, just re referring back to that scat, that scat thing, is that, do, does that scat thing tend to happen more within the community of like white, or, like whites that don't clean their ass or, or do blacks tend to be more concerned about anal hygiene and not be into scat or is that sort of not really a general, generalizable argument? Exclusive for sure. But if I were to lane left to right, I would say then more white guys are definitely more into the scat. But <laughs> making it it's like no. Excuse me, I'm drum phone. Oh, can you see me now? Yeah, let me just turn my camera on. Uh, uh there it is. My hair is a fucking mess, by the way. <laughs> No man, it's really it's 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 just um if we're talking about the whole ass cleaning thing, that seems to be a cultural thing where like we just it's like a lot of people with black guns, like we didn't know, like oh you need to actually get this fucking gun license. Oh shit. Oh can you see me? <coughs> no, you're gone. Wait, hold on. Don't worry about the video too much. Just carry on with this bloody conversation. It's quite, it's an interesting conversation. No, but I mean, like, even with black people, like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I got a gun. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm in America. I mean, I don't need to fucking have a fucking gun license, but yeah. What, what's the, re have... wh why are you bringing up guns? What's the relevant of that, relevance of that? A big, well, it's, it's apart from funny... apart from the gun being apart from the gun being clearly representative of the phallus of a you know sounds pretty psych can be psychoanalyzed pretty quickly, Dan. No, the gun is a representation of the 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 dick, right? An extension of an extension of the well, dick. Yeah. I mean, there is a uh, well. First of all, there's le legislation that says that if you are going to be a gun owner. You need to be a regis registered gun owner, gun owner, meaning if you get stopped by the police, they can pull you over and say, do you have a gun in your car? And if you say yes, then you need to pull your gun out and you need to show them your gun on the illustration. But I don't know how much you know about the whole Second Amendment. Yeah, yeah, vaguely. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, Second Amendment says anybody can have a gun. You just need to be legally registered. And a lot of people are not. Hey, a lot what, of black what, what, uh, why are you bringing up, I know, but why are you bringing this up in relation to the conversation about anal hygiene and because everything? They not ain't registered for having a fucking gun uh, by the Second Amendment. But at the same time, you want to have your booty clean. I don't know. It's kind of a ridiculous comparison. What's, yeah, I mean, but they're, they're, no, but that's interesting to bring up. Why? Why do you think? I mean, there's something there in terms of. I mean, because the the gun is an extension of the penis, essentially. In terms, if you think about it that way, right? I mean, mm. and I mean, one mm. of one of one of the things, just as a side note, which I think at its sort of deep, more deep unconscious level, we could argue that sort of the the great fear of the black man is sort of that like. They already have these huge penises and then they're sticking a gun on the end. Oh shit, white community's like, fuck, I gotta be scared as fuck of that because there's this big black man with a big dick and he's, a, and he's adding a gun on the end of it. Fuck, you know. The dicks I've ever seen in my life. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. And I'm like, whoa, like, you need to put that white dick like away for a second. Like, that's huge. But, <laughs> well, but I mean, that, but maybe, but, but then it's, it's perception, right? You know, there's this, the, the, the white perception of the, of the black man is that they have these big phalluses. And then if they're if they're throwing if they're throwing a gun on top of that, then our perception of the black man becomes even more sort of um, like fearful of the other because we're like Jesus, that's a that black man already has this huge dick that could fuck me in the ass and fuck me over or whatever. And then he's sticking he's sticking a gun on top. Shit, fuck! I've got to be scared as fuck of that, right? Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I get that, but it's. Um... We were going back to the whole thing about like why there's a correlation at all, but that's where the correlation comes from. It's it's like, oh, you need to make sure your fucking gun is registered. You need to make sure your fucking shit is registered. And that's it. 
But why, what, what, why do you think, why do you think the registration issue is important in relation to this conversation we've been having about anuses? I mean, it's, it sounds, this sounds like very much sort of like, it sounds like you've brought this up because of something like unconscious. It sounds like this, this needs to be psychoanalyzed. Did I? I don't, I don't know. No, it's just, it's, it's kind of strange. You just but suddenly you brought up the, suddenly you brought up guns have. in relation to this, and I, I, I don't quite know I why. Have. I'm not sure why I brought this up, but I was, I was going to say that um, in in relation to registration of like gun registration and like mm. keeping your ass clean. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to no, say. No, I, I think no, but it, I think it relates. I think it relates to the fact that what, what I think it relates to the fact that what we were talking about was sort of like it's like identifying as gay, right? It's like you almost like when you identify as homosexual, you kind of become like this registered homosexual. You know, like you have to come out into the open. You have to become. You're almost like registering all, yourself. Now you, I'm now all, I'm at homosexual. Now I'm gay, you, right? You said it. You 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 like X Men. We, I think we watched a couple of X Men episodes together. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyway, but anyway, what I'm uh, saying is, I think what you're talking about here, in in different terms, is saying that like, like when you like being gay means registering as gay, kind of, and like sort of being registering a firearm. There's some connection there, and you know, like registering. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. It's like the whole X Men thing was like, oh, you're a registered mutant. Bitch, you can control the weather. You can control the weather. But part so, of the problem, part of the part, part of the problem, Dan, is that th that's that's the problem. Like the re the registering is the problem, right? Yeah. Because the, it's a territory. Yeah. It's a territorialization. You see this in all. You know, because originally, sort of the the gay identity, homosexual identity, was actually something somewhat sort of uh subversive and transformative and challenging to the existing system it's like it's bull it's like i mean is you worried about your wife coming to fuck me like i mean what was the problem like i mean like i don't know what the problem is but if you can control the weather that's a fucking problem that's a huge fucking problem like i don't know what do you mean control? This, why are you bringing that up? That's another interesting. Why are you bringing up this? So you're saying that? Okay. To you that that was the uh, animated series that I thought that I made you watch. Maybe I didn't. But um, there are several mutants. Have you ever seen any of the X Men movie series? Just, just no? give me one. I just need a piss, Dan. Explain. Good, I just can... whilst you're away, explain. Go. Try to explain what the hell the connection is. I mean. I, I think that we fleshed out the connection between the firearm registration and the, the other thing, but why why this issue about controlling the wet controlling con controlling the weather? I don't understand.
Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to put on some coffee. No, I was asking, I was saying about what, why, why are you bringing up this control of the weather issue? No, I was saying, like, I mean, if there was any mutant, it doesn't matter if this bitch had the ability to control the weather or shoot optic beams out of their eyes, which I know you're familiar with the X-Men, like, but I mean, like, would there be a mutant registry account where we know where, what these people can do? Can we restrict them at the same time that they need to be restricted? And if I was around here flying around making tornadoes and shit, you're not going to restrict me. But then, I mean, precisely, precisely that's the point, isn't it? If, like, if then the, the whole point of that sort of registration, that, that sort of identification is a way of restricting the subject from being de a human from, from being deterritorialized and not trapped in institutions and in existing discourses and narratives that they're actually sort of a, an actually free subject, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, the, this is one of the major problems of contemporary sort of... Um, identitarian politics and all of the stuff surrounding sort of like social justice and stuff on in, in black lives matter and all that is that it's so much of it's obsessed with identity you said it yeah. you said it. i mean i mean if i it's so funny because i mean i don't know how much the next man fan you are where's you at i can't even see your face sorry i'm, I'm, making, I'm making coffee <laughs> oh what you you where are you finna go I'm making coffee. I know, but where are you going to go? What? I don't understand. Where are you about to go? No, I'm right here. I'm just, my kitchen's right here. Later on today, where are you going to go? Oh, no, I've, I've got a, I've a lot, lot of stuff to do. So I'm trying to get all this podcast stuff going, basically. So, um, Man, you both. Me and you this, both. Meeting this other community. Me, I, I went to this meeting of this community called Pyro Theology yesterday, um, and quite, quite forcefully challenged a lot of the ideas of the person who sort of started that movement. His name's, his name's Peter Rollins. His name's Peter Rollins. He's like a, he's a Northern Irish theologian. I want to ask some questions. Where's you at? You in Mexico? You got your residency? Where's you at? Mexico City. Mmm. You got your little lady thing over there. Best city, best city on earth, mate. No, I ain't asked you yet. And I'm asking if you got your little lady thing over there. No, I haven't at the moment. Enjoying being uh, not, but I'm not. No, I'm very much in an ethical. I've. Really, this year is a new new era. No longer a promiscuous twat. Why? Because I, I need to be an ethical subject. I don't I don't agree with it anymore. It was just for me personally. I don't judge other people if they engage in it, but it was it was really damaging. It was in it was making it impossible for me to find love or have any experience of love at all. And so yep. I couldn't I couldn't value. Good job. To I had totally lost the ability to actually love anyone. And so it was just, Good job. it was devastating. It was tragic. I couldn't continue that life, you know? So I had to move forward. Good job. The only way to do that was by reestablishing some effort. You know? this, so this year, you agree? I got rid of everybody, from everything, every platform, just deleted everybody. You know, you know, I divorced my mother and I'm literally not speaking to her ever again. So we have to talk about this, like what happened? Well, let, let me just find the lid to this coffee. Won't I? Water, go get your coffee or whatever. But yeah, we I gotta it. find. Yeah. It. It's, 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 to me, it was totally yeah. justified. Um, and maybe you, uh, it'd be interesting to hear what your opinion is. But where the fuck did the lid go? For fuck's sake! Ah! Oh my god! I'm coffee. so drunk. I my coffee. Jesus, what time is it over there? I'm 
Eight. 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 Jesus. Yeah, I've, just, I've started just not bothering, because I don't have anything to do really because I'm just free to do what I want. I just sleep and wake whenever I feel like it. No, I know that's the problem. It's kind of like, oh shit, what the you fuck? Have, you have more ideas and stuff, but you just wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, I've got an idea, so I'll just get up and start doing work rather than force. It's, it's deinstitutionalization. The only way, the only, the only way this, it's very interesting to think of why this is possible. I'll explain in a second. Thank God, for, thank God for international schools, Dan. All right, wait, shut up. I gotta find my plug. I don't know where my plug is. All right. Really, let me just find a pair of socks too, because I'm getting fucking tired of this. That apartment looks nice, Dan. Oh, Jesus Christ. That looks like second. You got a lot of nice artwork on the wall there, no? Wait, hold on. Why can't I? Okay, there it is. Are you on your, you on your phone? Yes. Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? I'm on my laptop. No, it's just, I was going to, your apartment looks cool. Just quickly. Ro rotate your camera and just show me your art on your wall or something. Okay. Can you, you see? Oh, yeah. It's a huge piece. Wait, hold on. Is this just the apartment Anchor. the school gave you, Dan? No. First of all, first, first of all, I pay for this shit. My school is not paying for this. Did you buy the apartment oh, or was it there? Damn gray alpha here. Like, what the? Did you buy the artwork or is it was it there when you moved in? Oh, uh it was there when I moved in. Looks fucking Can nice. Can you see it? One sec. Copy. Let's have a look. Yeah, I can kind of see it, yeah. Those mirrors the mirrors on the other side look cool. Wait, hold on. And I, I know how to do this. I'm drunk. Let me see if I can get into the Zoom from my phone as well. I don't know if you can have the phone and at the same time. There you go. You can have two people. I can have two people with the same name in the same Zoom call. <laughs> can you see my wall? Jessica. Sorry, let me just, I was just trying to get myself in. Look, I'm in twice in the meeting. Um, yes, I can see you, Dan. Kind of. You, no, know, you, know you, can rotate, you know you can rotate it so you don't need to use the selfie camera. Stop telling me what to do. <laughs> just look on the screen. Look, here, this is my phone. You can see my apartment now. I just moved in yesterday. Mm -hmm. Show you it quickly, it's nice. Here's my kitchen. It's just a studio, but it's in the best neighborhood in the whole city. This is my sword that I made. Guerrero. This is a piece of artwork I made recently. See that? Is he gone? Idiot, he's gone.
Let me record this still. I refer you to the book of Anti-Oedipus because it, it, it explains a lot about the experience of how if, if you're successfully able to navigate the schizophrenic experience or the psychotic experience, then it, it reveals a lot to you about the problems in the world and, 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 and sort of breaks through the, 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 the matrix, I suppose, to a certain extent you could say, because it's, because psychosis or schizophrenia is actually fundamentally a semiotic experience it's one based on language on on systems of signification it allows you to, it opens you up to see how reality is constructed in terms of language and that there's there's possibilities there's way there's sure. out there's there's so there is, there is space the, outside there is space outside the text as derrida might say right but the justification for why you gotta go was based on some very formal anyway creative the point, the point language the point, going that back they to had to what what you want what you were, you won't even listen to what I was trying to explain to you. I just to say, to yeah, but Dan, the question you asked was about why I divorced my mother and I didn't really finish the explanation, right? I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you that. I was asking you about your deportation from Gerber. Representing from Kerber, you were evicted from Cuba because they came up with a very um, legal note of the uh, situations that I'm not really, but, not really, Dan, because they, I was in, I wasn't legally deported. They, the Cuban government, really helped me out. Actually, they oh. They believed a lot of what I was saying um, and helped me out. They 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 helped me in every way they could. Um, they didn't arrest me. They didn't they didn't they didn't isolate me. They didn't do anything. They helped me in every way they could. Um, they genuinely believed. I think uh, several of them genuinely believed in what I was saying, which was what I ended up concluding was that I had discovered objective evidence for the existence of synchronicity, and I have. Okay. The, the objective evidence for the existence of synchronicity, and and that that's radically transformative of society. Now it sounds it sounds that's, like schizophrenic that's... madness, but it's not. I I literally have evidence of the. No, it doesn't. Do you want to see sounds... one? Do you want to see one video, Dan? Just to just to demonstrate this, it's on my YouTube now. It's fucking bizarre. Send it to me. Okay. I would like to see it. Um. But I am interested in hearing about, like, what happened with your parents. Like, I know, I thought you were, like, a little bit closer to your dad, but I guess yes, that's no, not... I mean, no, like, my, I can, this, this is part of the story. Yeah, I'm much closer to my dad. My dad isn't a fucking asshole. Um, so I, I basically, well, after, after Cuba, my mother did the same thing where she just sort of, like, she treated me as if I was defective and ill. Like she pretty much has my entire life, to be honest, has treated me as sort of like different and mentally, mentally unbalanced and like treated me like my father, basically. Oh, you're, you're always like your father, you know, who my father, you know, is in the UK, has been institutionalized like four times, is bipolar or whatever the fuck they want to call it. You know, some bullshit fucking diagnosis of labeling and crap that's just nonsense and just a way of a way of. um preventing disruptive thinking in a society and that's the whole point of fucking Deleuze and Guattari is that the last the last area of terror of non-territorialized subjectivity is in the mentally, mentally ill you know anyway my mother my mother is thoroughly trapped up in that whole narrative of treating people as defective and ill and trying to turn it into a, a biological phenomena and basically psych psychiatry writ large and it's just disgusting. I can't, I couldn't just, after Cuba, she did it. And it, 
And so many people did it. Everybody fucking did it. What was she, what, what, what was she saying? Well, she was like, oh, you're a fucking crazy ass. No, like, it, it was, it, even, even if she didn't say it, it was the subtext of what she was saying all the time. Unconsciously, she was saying that. And unconsciously, it was just a representation of her own self-hatred because of her own issues. Right her own issues with her own yeah. sexuality and you know she's a lesbian now but i mean her own issues with her own sexuality and her own yeah. problems I know that. anyway anyway all of that's caught up in that but i mean regardless and her own depression all of that but i mean it's just the problem was that she did that after cuba and so did many other people um and that transformed me in uh, i ended up having severe depression as a result after it because none of the ideas i was having were accepted or allowed to per be permitted by the French groups and people around me. And exactly the same thing after, after the most recent experiences I've had of sort of what would be characterized as psychosis or schizophrenia by psychiatrists or even psychoanalysts, because I made, I literally made my psychologist cry and I consequently fired her because I made her cry. <laughs> Jessica, you didn't call me to tell me any of this. Dan, why are you making so much fucking noise? Jesus Christ. Oh, wait. Did you hear me? I said, Jessica, you didn't tell me any of this. No, but you're making a lot of noise, and it's very hard to speak over the bullshit noise you're making. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, you can't talk over it. Anyway. I mean, yeah, that's a separate thing. She did the same thing. It was just, she literally, my, my psychologist, I called her, because she asked me to call her, and she said, not a psychiatrist and basically the subtext was i can't institutionalize you even though i want to and it was just like fuck you like this is done this relationship is done i i mean and then we had a long discussion oh, for fuck's sake dan you're making too much noise i'm here i'm here just rattling and <laughs> Can't speak over. I'm on the floor cleaning shit up. I'm here. Well, I'll wait until you've fucking done it because I can't speak over that bullshit noise. No. Oh. Jesus Christ. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So basically, I'm sorry. my psychologist was the same as my mother in that they both just. <laughs> I, I can hear you. I just turned my sink on. You don't have to be like that. I just turned my sink. I can't talk over it though, Dan. No, no. I just turned my sink on. Ooh, who is that? Who is this girl that you got on the hold down? Oh, that's my other friend. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Jesse, don't be angry. No, I'm not angry. I just, every time I speak, it seems to just turn into noise and I can't speak over it. All right. I can hear you now. Okay. I everything so you said I was about the mother. Was that basically everybody I spoke to after Cuba pathologized me and transformed me into some sort of like lunatic experience. A lunatic and what? I can't speak over it, Dan. I'm giving up in a second because it's pissing me off. It's your fault. It's not my fault. You said lunatic and something. I didn't hear what you said. Every time I speak, it just turns into fucking rattling noise. Like that. What, what the fuck's the deal with the noise, Dan? For fuck's sake. I can hear everything you're saying. You're but being you're angry. Constant fucking microaggressions that, because people don't want to listen to what you're I'm being saying. angry. I can hear everything you're saying. I can't speak though, Dan, because you're making too much noise. I all you I know what? All I'm I, not even doing anything. Okay, let me mute your microphone. Let me mute your microphone when I'm talking. All right, hold on. Because otherwise, I can't. I'm just going to mute you whilst I'm talking because otherwise I can't fucking talk because it's just noise and bullshit. So what I was saying was that my psychologist, when I spoke to her, 
this was after this was after various weird experiences that happened to me in Oaxaca, which is like the in in like in, on the coast in Mexico, um, which was kind of very similar experiences to Cuba, which was all of these synchro synchronicity kind of events um, that led to this crazy disruption in terms of transformation of my subjectivity. Um, and there was a total resistance to those ideas on the part of most people, again, on my mother and my psychologist, who both treated me as if I was mentally ill, um, which meant that they were trapped up in a world which is fucking flawed. And consequently, I just, I, after, with my mother, so what happened with my mother is that I called her after making, after making this new medium, because I'm very much trapped in the importance of media manipulation at this point, because I think it's a radically transformative idea for society. Um, I made this new medium, which is a video on YouTube where it has links to other videos. It's a really beautiful piece. And I called my mother and I was like, mum, I need you to stop what you're doing for 30 minutes to watch something. Can you do that? And she said, well, I mean, I asked her first. I was like, mum, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm just making some dinner. I was like, I need you to stop for 30 minutes. Just stop what you're doing, drop everything and watch something for me. And the reason I had made this video was in part for her because she had told me that the poem, the poem that I wrote, which was sort of this masterful poem that I wrote whilst um, in this first experience in Zipolite of sort of uh, uh, new, new ideas emerging in, in my subjectivity after having these strange synchronicity events. Um, she was like, I don't really understand what you're trying to say. It's too, it's too complicated. There's too many references to authors and stuff. I was like, OK whatever that's part of the reader's challenge the reader needs to understand that's what poetry is about the reader needs to interpret and understand what's going on why why do you want me to f fucking spoon feed you the understanding that's not going to help anybody and so anyway i made this video which is a sort of a video version of the poem and it's very interesting and i i i wanted i just told my mum just drop what you're doing and sh she said no i can't i've got to make the dinner and i've got to have dinner with my partner and i'm just like well look this is more important this is your son calling you to ask you to drop everything that you're doing and prioritize your son for 30 minutes. It's just 30 minutes of your fucking day. You can stop consuming for 30 minutes. You know, stop watching fucking TV and making food and consuming your bullshit life and fucking stop and listen to something that your child wants to say to you. And she she said, OK, OK, Jess. Um, no, I can't. I've got to carry on. I was like, look, mum, if you don't stop what you're doing now, I'm never going to speak to you again. And she said, uh, um, okay, I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing. And then, and then she considered it and she was like, no, I'm not going to stop. And I was like, okay, mum, that's your decision. Then you're, you're abandoning your son for your bullshit life of consumption. That's it. I'm done. I'm never speaking to you again. And then I hung up and that was it. You there? Let me try and unmute you. It's not letting me unmute you. Fuck's sake. Ah! The fuck? <laughs> 